uh, now we start with the fifth video which is on uh, homeostasis and it is the last uh, part of it which was left is the opening and closing of the stomata basically how do this stomata open and close and the second topic to be discussed is abscisic acid and uh, stomatal closure first thing that we need to understand is that in the cell membrane now if you look at it the green is the cell wall and the red is the cell membrane and in the cell membrane we have proton pumps and these proton pumps are going to pump out hydrogen ions so and these are ATP powered pumps and these are going to pump out the hydrogen ions so hydrogen ions pumped out by ATP powered pumps so these are ATP powered pumps which are going to be requiring so it's active transport now this is going to happen on both sides I'm not going to say it's happening on one side so hydrogen ions are being pumped out on all sides so hydrogen ion here hydrogen ion here being pumped out now when this is this causes the inside of the cells to become negative so both of these become negative inside now this creates an electrochemical gradient and what happens here is that there are channel proteins now these channel proteins are for potassium now these channel proteins are present inside the cell on the cell membrane here and here and everywhere so these channel proteins are for potassium so ATP uh, which pumped out the hydrogen ions causes the inside of the cells to become negatively charged and this we say creates an electrochemical gradient now this causes the potassium channels to open so potassium channels open now when potassium channels are when potassium ions move we diffuse in I don't say move in so but potassium ions would diffuse into the cell now it will happen in both the guard cells I'm not saying it's happened only in one of the guard cells so potassium ions diffuse in now when uh, the potassium ions diffuse into the cell this would be by facilitated diffusion now the high concentration of potassium ions inside the cell guard cells it lowers the water potential now suddenly there's so many ions in it so this lowers the water potential now this is the letter psi that we use for it so it lowers the water potential now this of course is a very very helpful because if it lowers the water potential then what do we get we get the molecule that we want water moves in by osmosis because it's crossing a partially permeable membrane so water moves in by osmosis now when water moves in by osmosis down the water potential gradient and this entry of water increases the volume so what we find is that the volume of these cells is going to increase so these cells are going to become a little bigger but when they become bigger this inner wall is and so it sort of separates out and this one also increases in volume so the guard cells increase in volume and this opens this inner wall and this creates this opening so this opening here is going to allow the stomata to open so if we just recap it ATP powered proton pumps pump out the hydrogen ions the hydrogen ions pumped out this creates a negative charge inside the cell this results in the potassium channels opening so the potassium channels open and potassium ions diffuse in so when the potassium ions diffuse in this is going to result in lowering the water potential and when the water potential decreases then we have water moving in by osmosis so water moving in by osmosis and this increasing the volume so the volume increases so the volume increases and uh, more water enters and the cells the inner wall moves apart and this creates an opening here and this opening is called the stoma and this of course is how the guard cells open and close 
the closure of the stomata uh, is not not a very beneficial act for the plant because when the stomata close it reduces the uptake of carbon dioxide so no carbon dioxide entering so no photosynthesis but it also reduces the rate of transpiration and as you know transpiration is uh, used for cooling the plant and also it maintains the transpiration stream that is going to provide water and mineral salts mineral ions to the leaves and the other parts of the plant but uh, what we see that in conditions of water stress the hormone abscisic acid aba is produced in plants uh, to stimulate uh, stomatal closure now we've got to study how this happens and how aba or abscisic acid causes stomatal closure now as we look at abscisic acid or in uh, short it is called aba so aba and uh, stomatal closure we find that it's a stress hormone and stress is when the plant is in stress just like when we are stressed we release the hormone adrenaline which we've just been studying but here the stress in a plant is a different uh, situation it is usually to high temperatures because high temperatures is going to result in a lot of water loss by transpiration so that is not very beneficial from the plant so number two again reduced water supplies less water in the soil now this results in the secretion of ABA and ABA can be found in every part of the plant and it is synthesized in almost all cells that possess chloroplasts. So what is going to happen in drought we find that ABA can be 40 times more than the normal levels which are usually found. And also what we find is that if we apply ABA, so we've made ABA synthetically and if we apply sort of apply it to a leaf I mean just like you know you apply Vaseline to your hand so you can apply ABA to the surface of the leaves and we find that within just a few minutes the stomata close so the fact that uh, applying synthetically made ABA to leaves results in stomatal closure so there has to be some phenomena which operates in resulting in the plant sensing it and causing stomata to close now uh, we're not sure how ABA actually works but it seems that the guard cells have ABA receptors so if you look at ABA it has some sort of just like we had receptors for hormones so it has these receptors which I've drawn in this purple color so they have receptors on the cell membrane of the guard cells now this is of course i haven't drawn the whole guard cell with the cell wall i've just drawn the cell membrane so the membrane of the guard cells has receptors for aba uh, on them so this is going to sort of explain some of the phenomena which is going to operate in the uh, closure of the stomata now there's a lot of uh, ambiguity about how the abscisic acid works but roughly we have a very um, not a very clear idea but a rather mixed up idea about is that when the abscisic acid binds when the abscisic acid binds to the receptor it causes the proton pumps to stop working you remember when we talked about how so proton pumps which were pumping out the hydrogen these proton pumps are going to shut down so no more hydrogen ions are going to be pumped out so stops the hydrogen ions moving out but then another phenomena starts to occur in which calcium ions move into the what we have I've given a brown color to this calcium ions move from the outside into the cytoplasm and they also move in from the cell the vacuole so calcium ions move into the cytoplasm of the cell so this is the cytoplasm of the guard cell and so the calcium ions act as a second messenger that's very much point of the syllabus so the calcium acts as a second messenger and this causes negatively charged ions to move out so negatively charged ions negatively charged ions will move out now I have shown you the negatively charged ions as green so negatively charged ions will move out of these cells so negatively charged ions moving out then potassium ions are also moving out of the cell so potassium ions are also moving out of the cell so 
negatively charged ions and potassium ions moving out. Suddenly we have a lot of potassium ions moving out of the cell. And also the potassium channels, those potassium channels which allowed the entry into the guard cell, now these also close. So potassium channels which were going to allow the entry of potassium ions into the cell when we talked about this previously, those also close. Now all this loss of ions, all these loss of ions, the potassium ions moving out, the negatively charged ions moving out, this raises the water potential. So there is now more water inside the cell. Now when there is more water inside the cell, now this water is going to move out by osmosis. And this is going to cause the guard cells to become flaccid and the stomata will close. So again, just a quick recap. Abscisic acid binds to receptor. So abscisic acid binds to this receptor and we have this abscisic acid binding to the receptor. Now it stops the proton pump from working. So the hydrogen ion which was being pumped out, it is going to stop this from working. So no more hydrogen ions are pumped out. But then calcium ions move into the cytoplasm from the outside as well as from the vacuole. And suddenly now this calcium, too much calcium in the cytoplasm acts as a second messenger. Now this second messenger causes the negatively charged ions to leave the cells, potassium ions to leave the cells. So it's a lot of negative and positive ions moving out of the cell. So when so many ions move out of the cell, this raises the water potential. And water starts to move out by osmosis. And this of course results in the guard cells becoming flaccid and the stomata close. This completes this uh, chapter on homeostasis and this is the last video on this chapter and I hope uh, it has helped you all to understand this chapter a little better. Thank you everybody for listening and uh, for being this immense support uh, in my teaching career.